All right, what's up, guys? And of course, always welcome back to another video from yours truly, this calendar. So yeah, I think we're gonna continue with the talk to videos. I'm actually really, really excited about the Sun and Moon games, and uh, I can't wait to make wipeout battles of them. But as of right now, I actually do want to talk a bit more about the game coming up to, of course, release. And um, there was an article going up yesterday, which was very, very interesting and also kind of tough to read, as you do recognize that um, you rarely see a company go out of their way to actually, well, tell them how they feel. Um, and this comes from Go Nintendo, um, which they report on in the latest episode of Waypoint Radio, um, which makes it already a bold claim about the current situation over at Game Freak. The developer behind Pokemon series in this episode of Waypoint and also Walker claims that the morale of Game Freak's employees is at an all time low, but it doesn't elaborate <laughs> on why that is. Uh, if the morale is low, uh, we can easily speculate as to why that is. Fans have been rallying up against Pokemon Sword and Shield for quite some time all now. Uh, as the decision to not include po all the Pokemon in the, the game hasn't gone that well. Obviously, Game Freak employees want to create experience, for, uh, create an experience for the game for the fans that that, that the fans will enjoy. I'm sorry. Uh, and most of Pokemon games are usually met with insane amount of buzz before launch. Um, that's still the case with Sword and Shield, but not exactly the positive buzz. And I think they're partially right on this. I do. Um, IGN also released an article that unfortunately has been taken down. Um, I actually found a screenshot, but it didn't include all, all of it. And I can only assume why it was taken down, and most likely to not damage the sales number, as Game Freak are looking upon to actually trying to uh, damage control their situation. Um, game, or IGN, the writer of IGN, which is the reviewer for the game, uh, released an article where... Um, He's just said this game isn't much bigger than either, any other previous games released thus far. Um, he did say that the wild areas, while blooming with Pokemon, are still a poor facade for the Pokemon that aren't in the game, as he recognized that while there is a lot of Pokemon spawning, they're not that varied in this game. Um, he also said that he he expected more for a console, uh, this doesn't pass for a console game, uh, when the format is built like a handheld game. And um, it was very critical, it was very on point. He wasn't bashing on the game, but rather these are critiques and aspects he felt worrying as he was reviewing it. Uh, unfortunately though, like I said, they took it down and I am I can only speculate on why. Um, and one thing I really want to cover to really, where did this all started? I do want to cover it up to launch, this, or up to day, I guess, you know, until one week away, which in its own right is actually quite incredible. Do Even with all the bad press and my criticized Game Freak, I'm still excited about the game. So, so don't get me wrong on this. But it goes without saying, uh, the three hours episode at E3 was devastating. Uh, i never seen... Um, a dislike ratio this bad on any Nintendo product, even Metroid Federation Army did not have this bad, where, yes, it's 23,000 who gave it a thumbs up, but 87,000 said, you know what, fuck you. <laughs> it's almost, I think that's 25% or 70% of the people who looked at this gave a dislike. And I don't believe Nintendo ever had to respond on everything, and this is, like, it was probably a poor timing to do that on E3, where Nintendo is to be hyping up future product and the only big talk, even with um, the, of course, uh, Link's Awakening remake was revealed at this E3, it didn't have a chance. The damage was absolutely done, and Pokemon was supposed to be the big thing. It's the holiday release, um, it's supposed to be hyped up, but this small information about the Pokemon really, really damaged them. And the thing is here, we have two different cultures here. Uh, we have a Western way of handling um, 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 negative press, and we have an Eastern way. Um, usually when I talk to Eastern people, of course I'm a lot of work with, um, it rarely happens as we don't have that many products. We believe we have a few beers, and we have uh, one or two wines, and then we have, I believe, a lot of sake. 
But when we critique something, we are aware of that we won't get a response for at least one month, as the easier way of handling critique is not to respond directly. Um, and th it works for them. It means um, they get to, um, to really sit down, talk about, elaborate how they want to move forward. And I think that's a very... Consider business models as they are. I think that business model works a lot better in Western culture as Western culture deserve. You want to comment directly. If you don't have respond, you are deemed uh, caught on the spot. But it might just very well that you want to do damage control to see what you really need to say to, uh, to save face. Now we have a company that responded two weeks afterwards, which granted, I would say that's a Western way of responding. Problem being... The response wasn't sufficient. Uh, it wasn't that well thought off, and it basically was that Matsuda um, responded to the angry, angry fans, angry, angry fans. I mean, call them what you like, the angry fans or whatever. It's kind of insulting for Polygon to do that. I'm pretty sure most people felt the same way, even though they, you know, they got attacked. I mean, they were calling Game Freak lazy and greedy. And I guess they have the reasons. They clearly have nothing to go on. Not the point. <laughs> but yeah, basically Masuda said that um, due to, of course, a lot of Pokemons being in or already created, that it couldn't fit it all to one game. The animations and whatnot really, really uh, took a toll on them. And they failed. They couldn't provide as many Pokemons as they want to, uh, to provide the adventure they was aiming for. Well, not only is this a very, very poor, I would say, lie, um, because it is. Um, yes, I'm no a game designer, but the reuse models, yes, they gave them new textures, absolutely, but the models are already there. They're reusing them, and uh, upscaling models for a Gigantamax in form, yeah, that might actually take some time. Granted that they still just upscaling them. I'm pretty sure most well-rounded 3D programs today do fix resolutions on enlarging models. I'm, I'm convinced of that. Um, and just overall, this explanation in its own really didn't sufficient well with Western culture, but it wasn't we who gave the outcry here. It was the Japanese um, that actually responded very, very poorly to this. And consider this now. A industry company responded in a Western way, which is a quick response to... Um, to silent um, the mob that was creating. What they didn't think about was that Eastern culture, which is, even though we are a lot of the Western culture to buy the game, Japanese, this is so much bigger. And when the response isn't sufficient in a very short span and people haven't forgotten, they just blossomed again and the outburst was started again. And it really, really, really panned and rallied up. And unfortunately, this this just escalated things. Um, it didn't settle anything. And I think had it done like Eastern companies do, which is wait for the dust to settle, to respond properly to it, this would have fly much better. They didn't take that. Most likely Nintendo, more so Nintendo of America, probably pushed this for, you have to respond. You, this is damaging our company and our credibility and going to damage future products. Game Freak need to make a public statement. And so they did. Um, Matsuda probably had to take a lot of shit for this. And I'm pretty sure none of them was, were comfortable in stating this this early. They got, they got forced to, to respond to this. They responded. And, of course, the culture that are most, um, the buy the game mostly, were not glad with this response. It was a poor response. Not that fought out. People were still mad. And this just kept people mad. Now move forward at least three months, um, September, um, or October, we can say. No, September works with the little town hero. I think many people were very surprised to see Game Freak was releasing another game. Um, most, or general, people have been speculating, including me, whether or not they used their full power on having won the best team on the little town hero and the B team on uh, Pokemon. First and foremost, I don't think it works like that. But also, you know, they have roughly 200 employees. I don't think all of them are designers. Of course they aren't. <laughs> but um, it, it wouldn't be too surprising to feel that, um, you know, 
people were making suggestions in you know, hopes of actually rally up people that you know they are not making full attention to Pokemon. They want to want the other game to be better or to be success. And the game now released was a financial. Pretty much they got even. The budget was, I believe, um, somewhere around. Um, was it five million dollars? I, I haven't converted it in yen, but basically they pretty much, as far as the game has sold, gained roughly the same back, which is not good. Um, it is not good considering that during this time you had to pay for employees and whatnot. And uh, it was a big risk for them of doing so. Uh, so that this wasn't a success actually made it tougher for them. And considering that they have two games now back to back, it's going to be released. Pokemon's going to be a success no matter what, even with the bad press. But it started again. Like basically, because of this game was bad, people was worrying that Pokemon's going to be as bad. Pokemon, it the story about the models and you know them. This. Footage is a final graphics was pointing up again, and I was actually a part of the mob as I really really didn't think it looked good for a switch game But like I said, that's my problem. I don't play the game for the graphics, but uh, I absolutely can see when the graphics are underwhelming um, For this type of generation consoles that is you know you messed up when you look at Mario Kart 8 or Breath of the Wild on the Wii U and realize yeah switch is supposed to be better <laughs> Um, but you can't compare first-party products to uh, Game Freak's products. You can't. It's super unfair. You can set it as a standard, but it's not fair to compare them. Uh, so anyway, people were reacting to that, and then, of course, I think the worst part happened, which I have embraced a little bit, and that is that the game leaked. Um, a review copy in Mexico was... Uh, Received and uh, delete all the Pokemon new functions whatnot and while I as a Poketuber do thrive in that environment as it does give me an edge in the future future videos and more so future battles I also recognize that Game Freak have yet to this day actually have a release without things getting spoiled um, and the worst part is was that the Pokedex was now significantly lower than people were thinking um, you know what? I'll, if anybody wanna don't want to know when the Pokemon is in this game, feel free to stop watching now. I'll wait 10 seconds. Right. So, the total number is 400, which is far worse than anyone was feeling. The Dex, the Dexters was really silent about this because they most likely didn't expect it to be this bad uh, and I think that goes without saying I think I I myself was thinking around 500 700 maybe cut one 200 Pokemon if to do that fine it's not fine but no fine <laughs> but it's way worse I mean considering that there are 80 Pokemon in in this game it means there were 320 that are from the old generations and considering we have roughly 807 before this game, so that means basically, what is it, 480 Pokemon are in theory missing, close to 500 Pokemon are missing. <sighs> I would don't know if that is, like I said, we can only speculate that hopefully there are other means of gaining Pokemon that aren't in the decks. Um, but as of now, that is what we have to go on. And this started again. <laughs> Because the people who were defending Game Freak till this point was also surprisingly silent. And I think because what they have defending was something they would never allow. Now that all are facts, your your favorites are most likely gone, and you there are not sufficient Pokemon no more for a bigger league. There are a lot of aspects to take into consideration. It was very hard to tackle. I myself, when I look at the decks, I was just like I miss Stoutland, I miss Tropius, I miss x I miss Agron, I... Fuck, happened! And I really meant that. Heracross is in this game either. Scyther, Scissor... Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Those are ones... Like, there are no favorite Pokemon from my side that made a game. Yes, I like Golisopod, I like Jellicent. They're not my favorites. 
And I was really bummed by that. And I can only assume most people felt like me. Um, many reacted to this. Um, the DMC, of course, has been happening and you know tried to damage control the whole situation. They are allowed to, of course, DMCA people. I'm like if I was DMCA, then you know my content was getting cut. Fine. As I said before, I don't gain them on YouTube, so uh, I I don't worry about that. I don't believe I have um um an effect on YouTube such as Shofu or Verlicified, which when they sprue out their content, they're getting spread fast. I don't have that. I don't think I ever will. I won't get that ever. <laughs> But basically, this, like I said, it started everything. What made it worse was most likely this was escalated the situation that came free of anything. They needed to stop this. And at the same time, IGN got that article out with the reviewer not being totally fine with the situation. And there actually been rumors now that Game Freak won't give out review copies to Europe or uh, review copy anymore to any American companies. Uh, Japanese have gotten them as far as I'm aware as they got them faster. But... For example, I have two friends or worked at reviewers in Sweden. One of them got him and got him last week actually. The other one hasn't and has been informed that he won't get it till the 13th of October or, or November. That means he has two days to review this game. I can only assume it has to do with avoiding bad press to launch because it seems due to response of the game getting leaked and also this kind of critique that this is not sufficient for a console game that they realize that uh, all the things that has been building up will come back to them. They haven't damage control the game as they failed to respond properly from the get-go and they decided to keep going. Um, much like Shigeru Miyamoto game, a delayed game that is eventually good is going to stay good. A rush game that is bad is forever bad. Game Freak has a lot to lose on this, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me that if um, the, the overarching response are so big uh, with negativity that they might very well lose this IP. Um, we had a movement that have been clearly stated over and over again that if you don't like the game, don't buy it. At this point, even if people say that, um, I don't believe, I believe that financial effect is so minimal that it won't matter as uh, the games itself aren't the main income. But bad press and negativity that lingers after the game's release, it's something they can't get off of. That's gonna stay, that's gonna linger, it's gonna be... Generation 8 might very well be the generation where people said, what the hell how does this pass the game? I don't think it will, and I really hope it doesn't. But just just the thought that this time, people aren't as hyped about this game. This was supposed to be a celebration when it was revealed in back in early June. We were going to be excited about the trailers, but every trailer has been responded with, what are my favorite Pokemons, which are missing, and now what that we're getting from the Pokedex are not even close to what we thought was going to be. I I think they have a lot to respond to after this game. And uh, we saw already in a few interviews uh, <laughs> that uh, there are sitting PR people next to Matsuda and, uh, oh, the guy with the glasses looks like uh, Hideo. <laughs> but it's not Hideo. Uh, anyway, they look upon them before responding as... Uh, they seem to be almost silent. They are absolutely under press. And they think it has to do they can't afford more bad press. They can't... It seems they can't reveal anything in this game no more because the lash out is so huge. And if it is, like I said, there is all these 400 Pokemon in this game. It's going to be a replication of this. And I can't say that word. Repercussions. There we go. And um, yeah, I just... I'm worried, and uh, I understand that the morale is all-time low. It should be, and I think it's awful. I think no company should be forced to experience anything like this. Uh, not for a po for for a company that has building a fan base with so, so much. Even though you know we're we're all clearly grown-up man-childs, we all are <laughs> to an extent. Um, 
but it's built with positive and excitement. You know, the, the community are the ones that builds up the game. You know, we're spreading it and we talk about it and spreading, you know, how excited we are. This is the first time that isn't the case no more. Um, there are a lot of responses that just are bad. People are so negative. I am. I've been that far too long and I recognize that, but also realize that they failed to convince me otherwise. So I think I feel bad for them, but also recognize that they might have created this themselves and I'm I'm sorry. Uh, but that's my take on it. I can only assume this is what's going on and this turned out to be quite a lengthy video So I guess I'm sorry about that a little bit actually uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And what are your takes on this? I mean there are a lot of things to kind of like I said, this is only speculations and uh, But I think to strike close to home I really do um, So anyway as always guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you next video until then take care